the Senate Minority Leader, Senator Enyenaya Abaribi, has vowed that no amount of threat will stop Ndibu from demanding equitable treatment in Nigeria, insisting that the marginalization has become unbeatable. During his speech at Enugu during the inauguration of the Ibonine South Sociocultural Organization, Senator Abaribi lamented that Igbos have been pushed to the fringes irrespective of the fact that they are the glue that holds Nigeria together and as the highest domestic investors. He said, despite the fact that Igbo are glue are the glue that holds Nigeria, some people are trying to push them out. But he said they are not going anywhere. Abaribe went further by saying that we have a government today that is manifesting sectional leadership. Boko Haram has been killing people, but nothing was done to them. When our boys were carrying flags running around, it was easy for them to get them proscribed as a terrorist organization. But the same government refused to designate the Boko Haram, which everybody knows their activities. Killing and destroying and bombing church and institutions. When we challenged them, the Minister of Information said that Boko Haram was faceless, but our boys were known. He said, if dominant position in Nigeria today is restructuring the minimal demand of Ndigo in Nigeria, he said, if dominant position in Nigeria today is occupied by others and restructuring the minimal demands in Ndigo in Nigeria cannot be anything less than that of restructuring. He insisted that it does not matter how the leadership of the APC threatens or tries to shut them off that Ndibos will not be cowed. Ndibo will not be cowed in any way to stop demanding for equitable treatment in Nigeria because Ndibo are the highest domestic investors in the country. This is coming at the back of the heels of President Muhammad Buhari's statement referring to the Southeast, the people of the Southeast, that is the Eagles, as a dot in a circle. What are your thoughts, guys, concerning this particular news development, as it were? We all recall that Ndigo are actually seeking to secede from Nigeria. They are interested in gaining the Biafra uh, Republic through referendum, which the agenda which is being led by Namde Kano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. As it is, the federal government of Nigeria, under the APC led administration and government, has refused to listen to the people of the Southeast, has refused to listen to their agitation, has refused to listen to their calls and uh, to the marginalization calls and claims that the Southeast are making. This has not gone down well with a lot of um, Igbo leaders in the Southeastern part of the country. While a lot of them cannot speak, are yet to even open their mouth to speak, some of them are actually quiet and also dining with these same people who are marginalizing the people of the Southeast. But Senator Enyenaya Abaribe, who has now garnered the name as the people's man who has constantly risen up to speak for the southeast has come out to say that the Igbos cannot be stopped from demanding equitable treatment in the country because the Igbos have great and greater stake in the country. It is sad and unfortunate that the Southeast is going through this uh, much and level of uh, disdain, segregation, and uh, neglect. 
We keep our fingers crossed to see how things unfold on this particular new story as it were. It is glaring to all that the people of the Southeast are not pleased with the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari under the leadership of the APC, despite the fact that people seem to claim that the APC has done much more for the people of the Southeast than past administration. It is yet to be proven. It is yet to be seen or it is yet to be uh, acknowledged by most of the people in the Southeast. But however, do you agree with what Senator Inyanaya Baribi has said, that no amount of bullying, no amount of threats, no amount of cowing would allow, would make the Southeast the Indibu to uh, stop demanding for equitable treatment. While some have given up on Nigeria, that is some Igbos have given up on Nigeria, some are still optimistic that Nigeria would, uh, the Igbos would benefit more and will do well in Nigeria. Some are demanding, like the Ohaneze and the Igbo are demanding for the presidency of Igbo extraction, which they are pushing to realize in the next election in 2023. While some are saying that it is just a dream that is pushed too far, considering the fact that the Northerners, the Fulanese, have agendas and that would not allow such to happen. But some are also believing that if restructuring is carried out, it would help and they ought to push the chances of uh, the southeastern people, the Igbos, to have a much uh, more recognized stake in the affairs of the country. But as it is, it does not look as if the restructuring would happen because the National Assembly seems to be going to the route of reviewing the constitution while some are demanding for a new constitution. The, the presidency is saying that go to the National Assembly if you want the constitution to, if you want a restructuring to happen. So, but to a very large extent, the body language of this administration to a very large extent shows that there will be no restructuring and they don't care about what is going on. All they want is status quo. And this is part of the reason why we have this uh, Yoruba nations agitation and the Biafra Republic agitation continuously, you know, intensifying all across board. What are your thoughts, guys, concerning this particular news story? Do you agree with um, Senator Enyanaya Baribe, or do you agree that um, there is no need for anybody to demand any equitable treatment, that all hands should be on deck to push for the uh, realization of the Republic of Biafra? Well, drop by the comment section, let us know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe. Kindly hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories. Endeavor to share these new stories with your friends, family, relations, and loved ones so they can get to know what is happening around the world and be informed. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you guys on the other news. Thank you, and bye for now.